sadly all good things must come to an end now i am disembarking um viva one uh it's been a fabulous cruise uh i just realized i hadn't shown you through this but it was all the information about the ship which is also on the tv which is useful um and on the website as well so today we are docked in ghent we don't have the usual river cruise ship docking area um because there's a big folk festival on in ghent so we are about to get the shuttle bus into the city centre and then we're going to have a little mooch around before we go to the train station to get the train to Brussels and then we fly home, um, back to London. So the three of us leaving today and three are staying on. Uh, sadly I couldn't, I've got work to go to. Um, but yeah, I will look forward to telling you lots more about Viva Cruises. Sadly, we're travelling hand luggage only, which I managed to successfully do, which was a, an, a like quite a novelty. <laughs> um, I couldn't take this back with me in hand luggage. Um, Viva Cruises very kindly give everyone a welcome on board bottle of fizz um, as you embark on Viva One or any Viva Cruise, I think. And yeah, make sure that you take hold luggage so you can take it back with you or drink it whilst you're on the ship, of course. Um, but all the drinks are included on the ship, so... I am more of a cocktail drinker than a wine drinker, so I definitely did not go thirsty. <laughs> That's Viva One. This is something else. Well, I knew this was a thing on river cruising, that sometimes you went up and over other cruise ships to get to shore because they docked in a line. Um, so we dock next to Antonio Bellucci, I think it is. I'll show you. Bellucci. Bellucci. Antonio Bellucci. Uh, we dock next to her as a ship and then we went up and over. Um, it was the first and only time that we did. All the other ports that we docked at, we docked to the shore. It's a bit steep. It's a bit of an adventure, yeah. Walked over this ship, Antonio Bellucci. And now we're going on a coach. So some of us weren't getting off an official disembarkation port, uh, but we had we had seats booked on the shuttle bus and that took us into town, um, into Ghent. And then our plan was then to get an Uber to the train station and leave luggage with left luggage and then go for a wander. Ubers were busy. It was na uh, Belgium's National Day and uh, like a folk festival was happening. Uh, so we thought, Do you know what, we'll get the tram to the station. And that's what we did. We had a little nose round Ghent on our way um, to the tram stop, just in case we didn't come back, and then went to the station. Having been in Ghent a couple of times this year, it was intriguing to see how they um, built a stage over the river in the town. Um, it was, look, well, it was very quiet when we were there, but it was going to get busy, who could tell. So we had a little potter at the site, um, a little look with our suitcases in tow, and then we went to the tram stop. Now, we had a, a all you can all trips you can take ticket in one day for seven euros fifty and you actually swiped this card on the tram when you got on waiting for the tram to the station So our train to Brussels airport was not booked until uh, I think it was around about half past one in the afternoon. So we had planned to go for a um, mooch and a nose around uh, Ghent together. So we came to the station because we all had luggage with us with the idea of using a, a hopeful left luggage um, facility. And there was a left luggage facility, but it was in the form of these lockers. They were really good. So you um, chose the size locker you wanted. You chose the... Um, time period you wanted it for and then you chose a symbol and then a six digit number and so then it 
it, when it was ready, it told you which locker to put your case in. Um, and then you locked it. And then you'd be able to come in, put your symbol and put your six digit number and open it again after. Now, when we put our cases in, it was really quiet. Um, but when we came back, there was a queue of people waiting for it because they'd all come in by train to Ghent for this festival. And I think they wanted to put their luggage away and it was full because it was popular. It's a really good idea. We're using left luggage. It's technologically advanced. <laughs> the guys are doing their spare. Mine's intense. We then headed back on tram number one, back into the Ghent city centre um, to have a nose around. It's a bit rainy um, on this morning, but um, it was still warm, still very, very warm. So we went for a potter around, uh, went to see a few of the sites, take some photos. And then you'll see we ended up having some Belgian waffles. I mean, when in Belgium, you must have waffles, hey? And chocolate. <laughs> We found and had a potter down Graffiti Lane, or Graffiti Alley, I think, or Graffiti Street, maybe. <laughs> um, it's a great place if you're you know, into having your selfies done on Instagram. Great place to have some Instagram shots. It's a beautiful, colourful street. <laughs> As we walked past, a, a wife was asking her husband if Facebook had installed that blesser. I think it's more symbolism of Facebook is the big brother watching you. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely, lovely old street, really colourful. I'm sure if you were really, really um, photography minded, you could take some stunning colourful pictures along this street. And took some nice photos by the canals um, and river. Like, I went on a river cruise here or canal cruise, um, oh, a few months ago. I went on two, actually, and I vlogged both trips. So do have a look at those vlogs if you have more time to spend in Ghent, and you can see how I spent my time in Ghent when I had the whole day there. <laughs> you need to buy some chocolate when you're in Ghent, of course. Like, it's a given. Belgian chocolate. Oh, delicious. We then passed a bike rack in the centre of the city and I spotted some Viva Cruises bikes. <laughs> I reckon they were crew because we were parked, docked quite out of town. Um, and I don't think the guests would know where they're going, but maybe they did. Um, but yeah, spotted two bikes. <laughs> oh, she's like performing something. Like she was doing a kid's birthday party or maybe something for children related to um, Belgium's National Day and their folk festival. Everyone looked like they were having good fun anyway. <laughs> it was nice to see these particular little boats on the move because when we were last in Ghent a few months ago, they were, I think they were packed up for that, the colder season and some ducks had, had taken onto the side of the boat and had like a nest. <laughs> they were obviously evicted for the boats to start um cruising again i just love the architecture in ghent it's just so beautiful didn't have time to go into the castle but we went um to walk around and take some photos we only took photos from the canal last time so it was nice to be up front um to the castle If you've watched my previous um, two vlogs on Ghent, you will have seen me going on a boat tour with this company. Uh, they're really good value. I, I think they're nine euros a, a canal boat tour of about 40 minutes to an hour. Um, I'll put the details up. I'll have a look back on my old vlogs. But yeah, if you're interested in taking a boat tour in um, Ghent, do look at my past um, vlogs. I'm still quite fascinated by how they built a stage over the river. I think it's a great use of space. 
course, we had to have Belgian waffles in Belgium. I had a caramel one, um, and my trip mates had some as well. So, um, one had one with chocolate and banana, and the other had chocolate. And they were delicious. I love waffles. Especially, like, the waffles made with pancake batter. Um, these just were really delicious. I think they were, a, well, they ranged from sort of five to eight euros each. Um, definitely worth it and totally delicious. <laughs> we had them in a restaurant outside opposite where the boat um, trip place was that I've just shown you in the previous um, photo. like that our few hours spare in Ghent were up we headed back on the number one tram back towards um Ghent train station because we had a train to catch to take us all the way to Brussels airport and then we had a flight back from Brussels airports to Heathrow station roof was absolutely beautiful and then um some trip mates who stayed on i saw some photos of there's an antwerp station and that was beautiful as well and i've spoken to a colleague of mine who lives is from belgium um and she says yeah, the stations are beautiful but like, look at the detail it was insane beautiful So from Ghent you can get the train directly to Brussels and actually directly to Brussels Airport as well. Um, I had my ticket bought for me by the company but I will have a look and leave some information here about how much tickets are. Uh, the journey was about an hour and we went on the upper deck on the train um, which was good fun. <laughs> um, and I actually slept for some of the journey. Um, very comfortable seats and charging points as well. We'd checked into our flights the night before on the ship and then we turned up at the airport. Two of us were flying hand luggage and one checked luggage in. There was no queue for bag drop at all. It was amazing. Um, we then went through security, which was really quite quick. And we then went through like, passport control. So one of our um, trip mates, the guy in charge, was European so he could go through a, an easier, quicker route. And then two of us who are British had to wait. <laughs> but we didn't wait long, to be fair. Um, the, the queue was constantly moving. The train was delayed even by about an hour, so it wasn't too um, bad. We were hungry, so we got some food. And there were, like, self-service machines in the, the food hall in departures in Brussels Airport. And uh, so I was had this. Oh, it's delicious. It was called Beef, Beer and Chips. Um, I think the beef must have been cooked in beer, but I couldn't taste any beer. It was delicious. The meat, the pieces, chunks of beef were so tender and delicious. And then, of course, being in Belgium, you have mayonnaise <laughs> and then uh, ketchup as well. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this food was delicious. And there were lots of um, duty-free shops in uh, Brussels Airport. So we had lots to keep us occupied for with our short delay. Um, and we were very lucky. It was just a short delay and the flight went through with Brussels Airlines, which I have to say, until this trip, I didn't even know existed. They are like a subsidiary of um, La Fanta, and they were great. Really good, efficient, clean, comfortable planes. Um, and apart from the delay, which wasn't their fault, uh, well, I don't think it was their fault. Uh, yeah, we it was great service. Didn't even know Brussels had an airline before coming on here. Delayed, but it's been nice. Spent time with Enrique, who's led the trip, and John, one of the other content creators.
like that, we are back in London, back in Heathrow, uh, landing uh, very shortly in this clip. And then, because I'd successfully managed to travel with hand luggage, um, just had to go through um, passport control, which was really quick. No keys whatsoever in Terminal 2. Um, then, didn't need to do baggage reclaim because I'd managed to travel with hand luggage amazingly. Um, and then, yeah, then went through um, customs, nothing to declare. Hands reunited with Mr. No Cruise Control, bless him, who'd come to meet me. Uh, and then we got to the Elizabeth Line, his train line, back to London and then back out to uh, Kent and then an Uber from there home. Um, a really successful journey. I really liked my trip with Viva Cruises and I hope you've enjoyed following my trip with them. I highly recommend a Viva Rivers cruise um, if you're looking, if you're young and wanting to explore European cities and yeah, I mean you can't go on wrong with Viva Cruises.